What is happening guys? Welcome back to the channel and to another video. So, in the last video on the front bumper, I mentioned that I'd been playing with the filler on another part of the van just to see how it worked. Well, this episode is about that and obviously if you've seen the thumbnail and title, you already know that, but this is what it is. Turan wing mirrors fitted to the caddy van. This is, I think, the strongest way of making them. I've made one just to test it out and see how it all works. Now, I can't take full credit for this at all. As with the front bumper, Hef at caddyr36 on Instagram is the man that has sent me many pictures, a few videos, and discussed this quite a few times with me um, and explained how he did it. So I've done it his way, little slight alteration to the way that he does them. But yeah, they look absolutely mega. So I've not done the other side. Let's go and jump on the bench and show you how I've done it. So we've got the passenger side wing mirrors on the bench. What we need to do is break them down to the parts that we need. So this one being the caddy mirror, we want, we only want sort of the base plate and the metal part of the base plate. So we want those parts. And then we'll split the mirror. So we don't need this piece. We only want this piece of this. We'll remove foam off the back of it. gives us the base of the mirror. This being the Turan mirror, we want to pull this cable back through this hole. So it's out of the way and we're not going to go cutting it. So what we want to do now is cut this at that base point. And we want to cut this at that base point. But we want to leave as much of this aluminium on the back as we can. Uh, and then, yeah, we want to cut this one flat as well. Now. The way that I've done it the last time, there's two different types, three I suppose. Air saw with a normal blade in it, air saw with a big long blade in it, and a good old grinder with a one mil cutting bit. So yeah, I'll just start cutting some bits up now. I'll show you when the cut to pieces, what I've done. So that's caddy base plate cut to a point. We've got the plastic off, leaving the aluminium part on, which I'll trim it again. We'll now cut this one down, and on the back of here, you've got these plastic sort of rivets. Take them off because we're going to be cutting um, all of this aluminium away. There's that base plate cut then, cut that piece off and it's pretty much, you see that's pretty much flush with that. Now we'll clean some of these bits back um, with the flat disc at a later point. So it's now time to cut the Turan mirror. Now, what I did with this on the last one is, see this is all sticking off here. I want to cut this pretty much flush to the plastic. It's easier said than done. So, Kelly base plate's cut flush, and the Turan mirror is now cut flush to the back as well. So, the interesting bit happens. Obviously, we're going to want to mount these together. And what I'm going to do is cut some of this away so that it will slide in between the plastic of this and the metal of this. Now, first thing we've got to do before we can do that is grind this down flat to the back of the casting, which we'll do with the flat disc on the grinder and probably some other tools as well. But we'll see what I do when I get started. So 
So there we go, we've got this trimmed down to a point. Now what we're going to do is slide that in between the plastic and the metal of the caddy base. Get the mirror to sit in like that. Which is already sort of strong. It's not as strong as it's going to be. This one's going to be a lot more difficult than the other one because I've got to get it in the same place so it matches. So I'm going to take the one off the van, put it on the bench and we can do a few measurements and sort of refer back to it. Right, after measuring and sorting bits out, that mirror is now bang on in the same place as it is on the other one. Do a bit of a shut close up. So you've got this piece of plastic here is the Turan mirror, which is just up inside there. Um, and it's just sort of all held in place. The metal inside is all touching nicely. Um, but what I'm going to do now is draw around this opening here onto the Turan mirror. And then we're going to cut this so that it fits nicely into this opening. And then what I'll do is I plastic welded the outer case or the, the plastics together before we moved on to the next step to get the angle of the mirror correct. Right, so now both of them pieces are cut, ground down and sorted what we want to do and fitted nicely together the plastic bits and I've checked the dimensions they are the same dimensions as the other one so the mirror will be in the same place. We're gonna plastic weld it together with plastic welder, well hot staple I suppose, not really a plastic welder, to get it in the right area. So let's get it done. Now we've got that plastic welded together of a fashion and it's sort of holding itself together. We'll bolt it on the van just to check this angle, make sure this bit's level, which is the same as I've done the other side. So it's on, but it's wobbly as you like. Now, what we are gonna do eventually makes these solid. But now we need to check this level um, and then we'll move on to the next step. So by the looks of it, to get it to sit level, all we've got to do is push that bit into there to where it all touches, which is nice and simple, just put a clamp on it. There's that then, that's all cut, sorted, all in the correct place, all where it wants to be. I've double checked all the dimensions again, it's in the correct orientation and everything. I've put a screw here to pull that piece of plastic back that we wanted to make sure we got the, the level was correct, which it now should be. Here is the bit that makes all the difference on making these strong. So what I've done is cut a piece of steel, eight mil wide, with a 90 degree bend on it, but it's also, it's not just a 90 degree bend. That slides in through that groove there and rests on that piece of metal just there. Now what's that thin piece of metal gonna do, I hear you saying? When it's sitting this, it's gonna make a bit of difference. So this is polyester resin, so it's basically um, chemical anchor. So if you're putting fixings into a concrete ceiling in a shop or something like that, or even bolts in the floor, anywhere like that, you use this polyester resin that sets like concrete or like steel, um, and yeah, it won't come out. So we're gonna use that to push into it. Now, as you can see, this turned up damaged, so hopefully this is gonna work because I've already used the other nozzle. Give it a go. We've got a leak, We've got a leak. So what we're gonna do with this is get a load of it in to the Turan part of the mirror, all the way down, nice and down, like that. Same in that one, force it down. Put a bit down there at all. Oh, 
like that. Same in this one. floor again with a leak. Make sure you leave yourself a little bit of room that will come up through the bottom to make sure you can get your electrical cable up for your indicators and everything. Leave this area up. We are leaking a lot now. Pop this in. So the piece is still gone, that bit. Pop that in like that, cover it over. We'll leave that now where it is to go off by, well, within a few hours, it'll, I think it's 120 minutes, so two hours. That will be rock solid. And then we can start looking at doing a bit of filler work, which will be the same filler that we used on the bumper, the SMC carbon fibre filler, because it's good at filling big gaps. And there we go, that is that, gone off. And it's now solid, not going anywhere, not gonna budge when you're driving. So now what we're gonna do is sort, cut these staples down and get all this area filled in. So let's grab two of my bench and we'll start on that. So to cut the staples, I'm just gonna use a pair of these nail pullers. And we'll cut this as close as we can get it, which isn't very close. As you can see there, still a fair amount of it sticking up. So what I did on the other one, is used a hand file, but what I'm going to do on this one is try this finger sander. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but we'll give it a go. Works like a treat. Now what you want to do is you want to sand the staple so it's just under the face of the plastic. That way then you'll get filler over the top and you won't have any metal coming through. You filler. So what I've done there is just ground these so that they're below the surface. The filler will go over the top and there's no metal poking through to the outside elements. It's all covered in, in the filler. So we've got rather a large gap at the bottom to fill here, which is through to nothing. So what I'm gonna do is put some tape on there for the filler to stop at, which worked on the last one quite well. So I've just took tape on the back like that to, so that you've got a bit of a flat surface or something for the filler to stop against at least, otherwise it would just keep splurging all out the back and it makes it a nightmare. So we're gonna use the same SMC filler that we used on the bumper, the carbon fiber filler. So you wanna make sure you're wearing gloves when you use this stuff, cause yeah, it's not the nicest and it stains your skin. Now that's mixed up, start laying it on. There's the first layer of that. Now it is going to need another layer of that. Got a good layer of it on. Closed all that gap up. It's all pushed up against the tape at the back and done what we wanted it to. So that's that first layer done. Now this will definitely need another layer, as I've said, um, but it's a good base to start from. So we'll, when this has gone hard, we'll sand this back, get it back flat, 
looking good. And then we'll go back over it with some more of the SMC to close in some of the deeper gaps. Again, sand it, get it all nice and flat. And then we'll go back over it with the dolphin and it will look like that one. Nice, flat and ready for primer. So come over to my mate James's company at Spray Hub Limited on Instagram, hit him up, to get these wing mirrors in some primer. So let's go and sling them in the booth and get some primer on them. There we go, these are primed up, looking good. Now, they do need a little bit more filler work. Not a lot. They, they probably don't need filler, it just needs a bit of sanding, a little bit of a tickle, a little bit like that, just there. But yeah, looking mega. Another little part sort of done. Massive thank you to James for spraying them. He really didn't have to, but hiding out there. Thank you very much. Let's go and get them back in the workshop, chuck them on the van, see what they look like. So here we are, a good few days later. These have been back in the workshop for a few days. What I've done is temporarily sort of sort of built them back up. They're not, everything isn't clipped exactly where it needs to be, but they're back together and you're getting an idea. And I think they look, they look pretty good. They look pretty cool. This is all nice. Now, you've only, obviously you've only filled in sort of this area and I think we've done a pretty good job of getting them nice and smooth. Um, from the back, you can obviously see everything that's still gone on. What I've done is drilled a bit of a hole here be able to get this cable through which is for all the electrics and everything that goes on in them because obviously these have got indicators in they uh, were adjustable uh, by a switch electrically as well they're heated uh, don't think they're power folding they're not power folding either, though um, so the next step now that I did was I've rejoined all these because obviously we had to cut this cable because the plug wouldn't go through we I could have repinned it but might have been a bit more difficult. We could have wiped right down where they went, but I didn't, I cut it just there. Um, obviously got to put fabric loom tape on it still, um, but they're all soldered and heat shrink back together. Now a few people are gonna go, yeah, what you shouldn't have soldered them, you should have crimped them. I chose soldering because I can put loom tape over that and you'll never know that it was done. So the next thing is to chuck these on the van, see what they look like, see how they look. I think they'll look really good. Hell of a lot better than the standard ones anyway. And then we shall plug them into the modules that we fitted when we fitted the electric windows and see if any of this works. Now, I'm not sure if it's going to. Again, I've been told they won't. You need to code them. You need to this, you need to that, you need to the other. So as we did with the windows, let's chuck them on, plug them in, see what happens. Super easy to fit. Cable gets through that hole into the inside of the van. This little hook bit goes through the top into the rubber like that, push on, make sure the cable's where it needs to be. And you've got three M10 bolts that go through the holes in the door to bolt it into place. Because we're using the caddy base, they bolt straight in. I'm only putting one bolt in the middle temporarily to hold them in. So that's that in. Then we've got to take the door card off again. Luckily I've not put many clips in. Then this cable comes down here and plugs into the spare port on this control module. Like so. Clip this back on so we can shut the door. So that one's on just so we can shut the door. Same guy this side through the hole. Door card off and plug it into the spare port on this one. And there are those fitted back on with everything plugged in. So let's get the ignition on, see if the indicator works, see if adjustment works as well. Key in the ignition, ignition on with many, many lights, which will go out. Most of them will, will do when they start. This side, let's have a look. Indicate. Oh. What about the other side? Indicate. Is 
It's flashing. So that means by just plugging them in to what we've already fitted when we did the windows, the indicator is working. Will the power adjustment work as well? All right, so adjust this to this side. Turn the indicator off. Oh! That one works. What about the other side? Oh! They work too. So all we've had to do is plug them in and they're working. Oh man. So we've got everything working that we wanted to get working but as factory-ish. That makes me so happy. Again, I was told this wouldn't work and they wouldn't work and you wouldn't be able to get part of the adjustment. You'd have to rewire it all for the indicators. I just plugged it all in. There we go then. Driver's side, indicator working in the wing mirror. Passenger side, indicator working in the wing mirror. Now these mirrors change the look of this van with that bumper so much. It's going to look so good when it's painted. So there we go then. There's another job done that I was told wasn't possible. Wasn't going to be easy. It'd be a right faff. And all I've done is plug them in. All right, I've had to adapt them to fit the van, but I knew that was going to be a bit of a pain anyway, which again was a hell of a lot easier. Massive thank you to Hef for giving me all the advice on that one again. The guy's an absolute genius. Do go and follow him on Instagram because, yeah, he's got some mad builds on the guy when he's done some mad builds in the past. Obviously, we've got the tram wing on the other side, so I still need to weld this hole up, which shouldn't be too big of a problem. Bit of filler over the welded in panel, and it will be looking good. And then obviously we've got the indicators. Look, 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 they flash in the wing mirrors and it works. So if you don't already, do please consider clicking subscribe. Press that little bell to get a notification of when we post a new video. Drop the videos a like and give us a comment as well. It all massively helps within YouTube's algorithm at trying to get this channel as big as we can. I'm so stoked that they're working and everything that has come out of the Taran so far has gone in and worked how we wanted it to. So we've pretty much covered the majority of the modifications that I needed to before we do the colour change to it and the respray. So I think the next thing that we need to do now is strip the van down. We need to obviously bumper off, bonnet off, wings off, wing mirrors off, strip the doors all off and down, take all the glass out, all the door cards and everything off and get this stripped down to pretty much a shell and components so we can then start prepping all these parts for spraying. So starting to strip the van and getting it all prepped and ready for paint will be coming in a future video. We're going to leave this one here. Make sure you go and follow Amazon Competitions on all their social medias and check out that website. They have got some amazing prizes on the way. Thank you all so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Till next time, enjoy.